this campaign. And nice. um, what we'll do is we'll do it. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me see. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, great. Well, listen, welcome to our power training. Uh, my name is Noble Mike Jameson. And I get a chance to really share with you some uh, valuable content that I believe will absolutely change your business. I'm going to uh, request that you take notes uh, to today's presentation because you want to make sure that you journalize these, these skills that's going to help you have a massive amount of success uh, in business. Uh, I personally believe myself, uh, and these are things that I learned early on in my journey that made you know the biggest impact to what I was able to accomplish uh, as a successful entrepreneur, okay? And so today's uh, training are what are the five skills you must master as CEO? Okay, this is the topic of your notes today. What are the five skills you must master as CEO? Okay, uh, because we're all self-employed, right? When you're in this industry as a business owner and you want to know, okay, well, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to do? And so there's really, there's only five things, five skills that you got to master. And now how long it takes for you to master these skills is totally up to you, right? This is where the personal development aspect comes in, okay? Uh, whether you are attending your trainings, whether you're attending your conferences, everything you do in terms of training and experience points you in the direction of mastering these five skills, okay? Number one is you got to learn to sell. We're going to break it down here in a minute. Number two, you got to learn to recruit. Okay. Number three, you got to learn to organize. Number four, you got to learn to promote. And number five, you got to learn to influence. Okay. So if, if I'm giving you a description, if I'm giving you a job description on the skills that you're going to need to master, to become a successful CEO of your enterprise, these are those, okay? These are those, learning to sell, learning to recruit, learn to organize, learn to promote, and learn to influence, all right? And we're going to spend today's power training breaking down probably the first three, and then we'll spend another training breaking down the last two, okay? So let's take a look at the very first one, all right? learning to sell. Now, the reason why this is the first one, and these are in order of importance, okay? These are in order, all right? Um, and, and, and this is important. So the first one is learning to sell. What does it mean? You have to know how to share the value of your service, right? So this these skills can take you to any industry that you may be working in, but the very first thing you must do, right? is learn the value of your program, the value of your product, the value of your service, okay? This is extremely important. You got to know the value because as you know, when you bring value to the marketplace, that's how you make money, is bringing value. So if you have no idea of what the value is, then any, um, any inclination of success will be short-lived if there's no real value, okay? And so that's why this is the very first skill that you're gonna have to master as a CEO, as a person who's driving your, your business, as a person who's driving your community, as a person who's leading your tribe, is do you have real value? Because if you don't have real value, it's only temporary success, okay? And so I know people don't like to use the word sale, but I don't mind the word sale. Most of the time, people don't don't like the word sale is because they've had, you know, like a bad experience in some type of sales transaction, right? Maybe they bought a used car and the used car salesman, right, ripped them off and, you know, sold them a lemon. So now they associate sales with negativity, right? No, sales is just, hey, listen, transferring the value of what you have to someone else that can positively impact their life. So that's why this is the very first thing you must learn to do. Forget about everything else is that, man, are you bringing value to the community? You know, do, do you have something that you can offer to someone that you love 
and they can get value out of it, right? I always use this as a litmus paper test. If, I, if I'm going to offer something and I'm going to put my name behind it, can I sell it to my grandmother and she feel good about it and I feel good about it? That, that's one of the first questions I just ask myself. Can I sell it to my grandmother and not feel like I'm ripping my grandmother off? Can I sell it to my mother and not feel like I'm ripping my mother off? That's one of my first questions I always ask myself whenever I'm looking at something is that is, is it real value there? Because if I can't sell it to my mother and not feel like I'm ripping my mother off, not feel like I'm ripping my grandmother off, then it's probably not real value there. It's probably not real. It's probably not even worth it. Like it's a waste of time. So is it real value? So in understanding that you have to be a product of the product to get the idea of what the real value is for your service. And so we are in the service space with what we do. So understanding that will help you deliver that value, right? So you don't have to worry about if a person says yes, are they gonna get something out of it? You don't have to worry about that because you've already see the value yourself, right? And if you don't see the value yourself, you're in the wrong space, right? You're in the wrong business. You have to see the value in order for it to transfer to another person. It's huge. That's why learning to sell is the very first thing that has to take place, right? The second bullet point under this section is it helps you understand that you must um, know the difference between what you have and what the competition has. <clears throat> you must know the difference between what you have and what the competition has, right? This is your offer. Right, because we're in a uh, a capital capitalism economy, right? This is capitalism. What makes what we do special is that we get a chance to compete in a space where others can offer similar products or better. So therefore, it makes the consumer be on the positive end because in capitalism, you're going to need to deliver the best product, or people are going to buy elsewhere. This is, this is what makes what we do special, right? And so understanding the difference in what you have compared to someone who's in the similar space means all the difference in the world. So if you know another company that's in the financial education space like we are, then you should know what makes you different. You should know what makes us different as you start to get ready to share the value because now they can start to separate right, the pros and the cons and decide, hey, this is for me or this is not for me. So when I sat down with the, uh, a team member on yesterday and we were looking at the, the, the wheelhouse of our program, I was able to show them, hey, listen, if you're excited about this and you're not excited about that, you don't have to worry about that. Now, the reason that was important because this person had been scarred by the Forex market. I mean, scarred. As soon as I said the word Forex, she like balled up her fist. <laughs> she had been scarred by the marketplace. I said, no, 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 don't worry about it. We got other things that you can participate in, right? So I started explaining to her about Endow. I started explaining to her about, you know, Crypto Elite. I started explaining to her about the equities products and it put her in a safe place and she didn't have to worry about the things that she had a bad experience with. And you know, we didn't have time to dig into that part of it. But the fact is, I knew my stuff, right? And I knew what separated us from other people, other companies in this space, all right? So if you take your notes, this is why learning to sell as the first skill is so important because as you make a commitment to your business, we already know it's gonna take you about five to 10 hours a week to really start to wrap your arms around, hey, what it is that we do and what is this quote unquote job description that I'm looking to fill, okay? So learning to sell is the first skill. So you're gonna need to dive into the service. You're gonna need to dive into it and understand what it is you're looking to do, right? So what I'm excited about may not excite you, okay? But the skill to share that, right, has to resonate with you. So if I'm excited about, you know, the passive income, then I can talk passionately about the passive income. But if you're not excited about the passive income, then what excites me is not gonna excite you. And if it doesn't excite you, then you're not gonna excite the prospect or the guests that you're sharing it with. So you wanna dive into the products and say, okay, this excites me. And because this excites me, I can share it with three words, write this down. Because this excites me, I can share it with passion, conviction, and enthusiasm. 
right? Because it excites me, I can share it with passion, conviction, and enthusiasm. And if you can share it with passion, conviction, and enthusiasm, they will buy. They will buy. Even if they don't completely understand, they will buy. If you can share it with passion, conviction, and enthusiasm. Trust me. And in doing so, you will make great spare time income. So I'm putting a bow on this first bullet point. If you're able to do so, understand the value of your service, right? Know what makes you different. Share that with passion, conviction, and enthusiasm. They will enroll. And that will pay you great spare time income because that transaction is specifically based off of what you do. Your time committed, right? It's a one-to-one -one relationship. Makes great spare time income, okay? Second bullet point. Number two. Number two, learn to recruit. Learn to recruit. This is the second skill. So as you're trying to figure out, man, what am, I, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be learning? This is the second skill that you're gonna need to master, which is learning to recruit. Learning to add people to your community, to your tribe, to your team. Because this is the introduction to leverage. This is the right side of the quadrant that Dr. Robert Kiyosaki talks about. It doesn't happen until this part takes place when it comes to the B quadrant, right? Learning to recruit. So first thing is, the first bullet point is, okay, well, what is the skill? The skill is I got to know the value of my business, right? That's the first skill. That's the first bullet point. And learning to recruit is knowing the value of your business. Like, okay, so, so I'm in business. I want to bring a new asset, right, to my company. What is the value that my company is bringing, right? What is the value there? What is it that we do uh, so amazing that I want to highlight that would, that would make this person want to join me in business? You want to know those things, right? You want to know that value. So again, you can transfer that value to that person. So they not only say, look, I'm going to be a customer because I love what you guys are doing, uh, but not only do I want to be a customer, I want to be a, a mem a, a, an affiliate as well. I want to be affiliated with what you do, right? And, and a lot of times people get this mixed up because they think that every person that joins as a customer wants to be a recruit and they don't, right? They don't. Right. I mean, I love I don't know uh, where everybody is in, in, in the country. We got people chimed in from all over the place. But there's a shopping market here called Publix. And um, Publix is a, a, a shopping market, shopping, a grocery store. And they have a deli section and they make the absolute best uh, uh, Philly cheese sandwiches. <laughs> OK, Philly cheese sandwiches, chicken or steak or whatever. They, they make the best. The absolute best. Okay. So I'm a I'm a I'm a patronize their business all the time because they're they absolutely make I'm a customer of Publix Deli because of their Philly cheesesteak, right? But I don't want to work there, right? I don't want to be an affiliate, right? But I'm a great customer, right? When I'm hungry and that's what I want, I go there. I'm a great customer, but I don't want to work there. Right. And so what we want to do uh, in our business is that number one, identify the value that we bring into the marketplace in terms of what we're doing, right? And number two, you got to understand the difference in business and how we do it. Understand the value in business of what we do. It's a skill. And number two, know the difference in how we do it. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, this will not be the last opportunity that hits your doorstep. They come a dime a dozen. I promise you they do. Whether this is your first opportunity or your uh, 20th or uh, 100th opportunity, they come a dime a dozen, right? And so understanding the value that your business brings to the marketplace or to a, a person who's thinking about becoming a partner of yours 
is extremely important, right? And knowing the difference that you bring is equally important, right? And so what happens is that now you can be able to take those happy customers, the people that are happy customers that want to move to the next level and become a part of the community that you're building, right? Which is recruiting. And so the reason why it's, it's a skill set is because being able to communicate that to someone else is a skill, right? Because sometimes people don't know why you join. Right? I get a call from somebody and say, hey, can you, you know, can you join me? Uh, it's X, Y, and Z dollars, and there's no value to what they're offering me. You know what I'm saying? And so you want to make sure that you don't be that person. So what you want to do is that understand the value of your business, right? Not just the service, but now the business side of it, right? You're a businessman. You're a businesswoman, and then know the difference of people or entities that are in the same space. All right, this is a skill set. And so what it does is it gives you the ability to communicate with passion, conviction, and enthusiasm why you are, you know, suggesting that they become partners of yours, that they become partners of yours. And if you're able to successfully do that, as we put a bow on this skill, it will pay great part-time income. Now, remember, if you master the first skill, just being able to sell a service and it's you and it's only you, it's going to pay you great spare time income, spare time income. But if you master the second skill, the ability to, to recruit is going to pay great part-time income. It's a difference. The second skill, mastering the second skill will now pay you great part-time income. So this is where you now can supplement the part-time job that a person may have had, right? They work the extra 10 hours a week part-time on a job. They work the extra 20 hours a week part-time on a job. Well, once you master the second skill, because now you got two things that are working for you. You got skill number one, what you do. You can sell it. You can sit down for coffee. You can sit down and share the value and, 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 and close the deal. So that's going to bring income into your household, and that's great spare time income. But once you master the second skill, the ability to recruit by showing the value of your business, knowing the difference in who you are in the space, and now you have partners working with you, now you're able to earn income without time, right? This is why the second skill is so important, because now this is bringing income into your home without time committed. The moment you have one person that says, yes, I want to partner with you. So now, instead of earning spare time income off your hours alone, you're earning your spare time income plus income coming in for hours that you're not even committed. This is why the second skill is so important. And this is why the second skill is so critical, because now it really starts to supplement the part time. So the 20 hours or the 10 hours that you were committing doing something else. You can take that same time and focus on the development of the people that are joining you and get rid of the part-time job. It's a process. So if you have a part-time job, if you have something that you, that's got your focus now, time-wise, you can get rid of that, focus on the development of the people that are partnering with you, and that will replace the money you were earning on a part-time basis. Because now the first thing you're going to do with your partners is teach them the first skill. Follow me here. You're going to make sure that they understand the first skill, which is sh selling, showing the value. So now it's you plus one, or you plus two, or you plus three, right? People, that is. And you created leverage. It's amazing. This is a skill that you got to master. If you haven't understood what you're trying to accomplish as of yet, this is what you're trying to accomplish. You got to master the first skill and you got to master the second skill. The first one pays great spare time income. The second one pays great part-time income. And this is why. And this is why. So if you're analyzing where you are in your skill development, right? Where are you? This is the description of the CEO that I'm giving you as a successful network marketer in this space. These are the skills you need. These are the skills you need, the first two, right? And we're going to talk about the last one in today's training. Number three, number three, 
learn to organize. Number three, learn to organize. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is so critical as the third skill, three of the five, learn to organize. People have a tendency because they've never, uh, uh, the majority of the people have never been in charge before, right? The majority of the people have never been in charge before. So they don't really know how to, they don't have the skill of organization. But if they've ever worked a job before, and most people have, just like I have at some point, the person who is responsible, the, the, the manager, the supervisor, the CEO, they're completely organized, right? They know what the shifts of each employee is, they know who's responsible for what, right? Who's responsible for opening, who's responsible for closing, they're organized, right? And so if you're not organized, it's impossible to be a CEO. It's impossible, absolutely impossible. If your mind isn't organized, business is an organization, right? Business is an organization. You have to be organized in your business. OK, it's a skill set, though. It doesn't come magically because, again, most people are taught and told what to do. And because they're taught and told what to do, they typically are not in a position to organize. And when they pick up the skill of organization, they get promoted. They become the team leader or the, or, or the, or the manager because they got a little organization skills to them. So there's immediate value in organization. There's immediate value in the skill of being organized. So when I say organized, the first bullet point means how this entire operation works. You want to know how this thing works, right? So when we put together our campaign, that had to be organized from start to finish. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Organization. You get ready to do an event. In your local community, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Organization, right? You get ready to do a training uh, at a conference. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Organization. So if you don't have the organizational skills, what you end up being is an octopus on roller skates. You're all over the place. You end up being an octopus on roller skates. You over here, you over there, you over here, you over there, you over here, you over there, you over here, you over there. You're all over the place, right? And that's why we have a system, okay? Our system says, this is our organization. This is what we do. We do this on Sunday. We do this on Monday. We do this on Tuesday. We do this on Wednesday. We do this on Thursday. We do this on Saturday. We're organized. We're not an octopus on roller skates. There's a system to what we do. Because your success is going to be by design and not by chance. And if anybody has success before organization, it won't be long before it crumbles to the ground. It won't be long. You can easily identify dysfunction when there's lack of organization. When there's lack of organization. And so what happens is when you build an enterprise as a CEO, you put the entire infrastructure in place, right? This is who we are. This is what we do. And these are the systems that we run. And so what happens is that you will have these subcultures that start to develop and form, which is perfectly fine, right? I have the type of leadership is that I, because I believe in uh, abundance, right? I believe in abundance. There's enough for everybody to go around. OK, then I don't have a problem with people having their own identity. I don't because I believe what's for me is what's for me, what's for them is what's for them. Right. And so what happens is that when you have these subcultures, they'll start creating systems and things that speak and work to what they do and they start to organize around it. But it takes a skill set to do that. You won't be very good in the beginning if you've never organized before. You won't. And that's OK. But that's the benefit of being a leader or CEO is that you get the, what I like to refer to as 
mud face. Put that in the chat for me. Put mud face in the chat. Put mud face in the chat for me. Put mud face in the chat if you're following me. I know it doesn't sound pretty and it doesn't sound sexy unless you're getting like a uh, some type of facial treatment. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you get mud face as a leader. Here's what I mean when I say mud face as a leader, right? Everybody wants to be a boss. Everybody wants to be a CEO. Everybody wants to be a leader. And what happens when you take that responsibility and you take that stand, it puts you out front. It automatically puts you out front, which is fine. It comes with the job description, right? It comes with the job description. But because you are out front, that means you have two eyes looking at everybody and everybody has two eyes looking at you. So therefore your mistakes are magnified, right? So you out front because you're the leader, right? You have two eyes looking at everybody and everybody's got two eyes looking at you. So every single thing you do is magnified because you got twice as many, 10 times as many, 20 times as many people looking at every single thing you do. So your, your success is magnified. Your failures are magnified because you're out front. So when you have a failure, you get mud on your face in front of everybody. When you have a failure, it's magnified. You get mud on your face in front of everybody. It happens, right? But when you have success, you get glorified in front of everybody. It happens, right? Your strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. It's a strength to be out front because you get glorified in everybody. It's a weakness to be out front because you get mud on your face. Your strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. Happens all the time. And so if you're not comfortable with being scrutinized and ridiculed, then you probably don't want to say you want to be a leader. If you're not comfortable with making mistakes in front of people, you don't want to be a leader, right? But I want you to understand what comes with the territory. This comes with the territory, right? Being scrutinized, being, being you know, uh, whatever. It comes with the territory. Get used to it. Get used to it. But the strength and weaknesses are right next to each other. You out front, you make the most money. Not because you know everything, but because you understand how to solve problems and find solutions, right? Which is the second bullet point that I'm making right here in the organization. As a leader and you're learning the skill of organization, you make things easier for the team. This is the critical part about it. Because you're willing to get mud on your face, you're going to make the mistakes out front, right? Most people don't like to when they make mistakes because it looks like such a failure. In school, we're taught that failure is so bad. We're giving an F for failure, a D for failure, right? But it, it's the only way to, to, to move forward. It's the only way to get to success is to be able to persevere through the failure. So you have to get used to failing as the book says, failing forward, right? But what it does is because you've got the mud on your face, you can turn around and make it easier for the team so they don't get the mud on their face. They don't make the same mistakes you made. They don't hit the same landmines you ran into because you've already battle-tested as the leader. And it made you stronger and it makes the team stronger that's coming behind you. You made it easier for everybody. This is why organization is so critical. And if you can master the skill of organization, which is the third skill, it will play great full-time income. This, there's a process here. Spare time income for learning to sell. Part-time income from learning to recruit. Full-time income when you get organized. If you are not organized, you cannot be a full-time network marketer, period. If someone ever talked to me about quitting their job and I know that they're not organized, I'll tell them they're making a mistake. Because once you have the ability to create your own schedule and your own time, if you're not organized, you will waste more time than you ever know. You know how I know? Because I did it myself. When I first left my job, even though I hit the top of the company, 
even though I had mastered these skills, you still have some setbacks. So once I had my full schedule to my disposal, I had my full schedule to my disposal. I'm making $10,000 a month working 20 hours a week when I had my job. And then when I quit my job and I'm making $10,000 a month, but I don't, now I, I, I only work in 20 hours a week. What am I doing with the extra time now? ESPN. <laughs> what am I doing with this extra time now? All these different ball games from start to finish. Complete disaster. I had a setback. So I was like, man, I got to I got to be even more organized. I can't watch a full football game. That's four hours. Let me watch the, you know, the, the, the 12 minute recap. I couldn't watch a full basketball game. That's an hour and a half. Let me watch the seven minute recap or just catch the fourth quarter. Right. So if you're not uh, organized, it's impossible to be a full time professional network marketer. Impossible. The second skill, it's impossible. Right. This is why the third skill is so important, because if you master it, you can make great full time income because now you're controlling your full schedule from start to finish. You're controlling your full schedule. So the third skill is critical. The third skill is critical. Skill number one, drop it in the chat if you know what it is. Skill number one, right? Skill number two, drop it in the chat if you know what it is. And skill number three, drop it in the chat if you know what it is. These are the first three of the five skills that you need to master to be a CEO. So when you go into your trainings, when you go into conference, when you're getting on calls, when you go into personal development events that you have that's that's not related to the business that you're in, which I highly encourage you to do, right? Go to personal development trainings and stuff outside of the business that you're in. Invest in yourself. These are the skills that you're looking to master and take away. In other words, you're asking yourself, how does these things help me in my business? with my first skill that I'm trying to learn, my second skill that I'm trying to develop, my third skill that I'm trying to organize. This, these are the things you're working on. And I promise you it's going to change your business. I promise you it's going to change your business, right? And so that's uh, my time for today. We're going to pick up the last two skills on our next training, which I look forward to all of you participating in.